we talked a lot about the sun. Safe sun practices means, frankly, avoiding the sun between 10 and 3 when most of its energy is concentrated on you, on your skin. Uh, when I had little kids, we used to go to the beach in Santa Monica, and we would leave at 2.30, get there at 3.15 when the sun was getting low in the sky. And it was also cheaper to park after 3 o'clock by the beach, by the way. And uh, we would hang out on the beach till 6 o'clock. They'd have a great time. They had three hours in, in the, on, the, you know, on the ocean. But they were not exposed to the sun. And we used spray-on sunscreen. And, you know, I tell the melanoma patients, use SPF 50. Anybody, anybody else, I'm sure 30 would be good. But, you know, the, the whole purpose of a sunscreen is it's going to decrease the uh, likelihood of damage from the sun, but it's not going to eliminate it. It's just going to decrease it. And if you go in the water, it's going to wash away. And if you sweat, some of it's going to wash away. So if you're going to hang out in the sun for more than two hours, which is probably not a good idea anyway, you need to reapply it. Uh, I tell everybody at risk to wear a hat with a brim. Just wearing a baseball cap is great, but it protects the front. It doesn't protect the back and the ears. So I tend to not wear baseball hats. It should be a hat that where there's an SPF rating, where the tight weave that uh, will protect your head, your scalp, uh, especially men. And if you take a closer look, you realize I don't have a lot of protection on my scalp. Uh, men tend to lose their protection when they lose their hair. Women are at lesser risk, but it doesn't matter. You wear a hat. The brim protects your face. The top of the hat protects your scalp. The sunscreen protects the rest. And the fact that you shouldn't be out at noon in uh, Cabo San Lucas, for example, which is pretty far south in latitude, means you'll generally protect the rest of your skin. But to me, the typical patient is the uh, red-haired, blue-eyed, uh, pale complexion accountant who some, you know, goes on vacation two months of the year and he goes to Cabo San Lucas and gets a sunburn, a really bad burn every day he's there, that's the person who's going to be at risk. So it's intermittent sun exposure in the middle of the day, unprotected, not wearing a hat, not wearing sunscreen. That's when you're going to damage the skin. And by the way, forget melanoma. It's just not good for your skin, period. Because sun damage of skin that's uh, in people with pale complexion uh, looks pretty unattractive as you get older, you're male or female. And again, with respect to the sun exposure, it turns out it's interestingly intermittent sun exposure. So the accountant from Saskatchewan, not to pick on the Canadians, but he goes two, two weeks a year and gets a severe burn. That's, a, that's intermittent sun exposure. He's indoors the rest of the year. The telephone line worker, the agricultural worker, who's exposed to a bit of sun every day, interestingly, is more at risk of non-melanoma skin cancer rather than at high risk of melanoma. It's the intermittent sun exposure that sets you up for the melanoma, meaning an office worker who uh, goes out on the weekends two months a year and gets a lot of sun and gets burnt and then peels and then might tan a little bit or might not tan, that's the scenario where you're really at high risk.